Hey guys, let's get started. Um, today's lecture, we're gonna have a short lecture um, on design of experiments, or AV testing. And then in the seminar, you will have a chance to try it um, yourself. So, um, why design of experiments? Well, very often in business, um, you want to uh, try new approaches. You want to um, try new setups. Um, you know, you want to improve the services um, and, and you have certain assumptions. You have certain hypotheses um, you want to test. Now, the only real test is, is data. And so you want to create so-called controlled experiment or in other way, um, the name is A-B testing, where you would um, simultaneously try um, the new approach together with an old approach. Um, you want to do it at the same time, not consecutively, um, simply because the market conditions could change with time. And so you want to make sure that uh, your new ideas is tested in parallel with sort of the, the, the old one, right? The one that worked. And so um, the way to do it is you, through splitting, uh, you know, customers um, into the control and test or variation groups and um, measuring the results, measuring the effect and, you know, calculating the difference. Um, this is a very, very popular method, of course, for all kinds of online businesses, whether you're trying to compare conversions or the effect of advertising or pretty much any other, um, the, pretty much the effect of any other change um, you can create to, for example, online store or prices or, you know, whatever. Um, one thing which is very, very important to understand in this context, context is that when we try to do testing, uh, we never can test on an um, uh, entire population, right? Because you don't really um, know and you don't have access to all your population. Um, population is pretty much the entire group of people. You're all potential customers on your site or your store. So what you usually do is you work with a sample, which is a small portion of this larger population. And the thing is, um, whenever you take a sample, um, there can be very different people that get into your sample. And so you get variability across sample in terms of the measurements you make. Right, and this is, we talked about this um, I, several lectures back when we talked about um, uh, setting up uh, training and test sets. So um, again, samples can have different um, variants, which means um, significant variability of the metrics within the sample. Now it's clear if the sample size is growing, eventually, of course, you know, imagine that the sample gets to the size of the entire population, of course, the mean in the sample, you know, the minimum population will be the same. Um, so in order to get uh, more out of statistical sampling and better results, you need to have a larger and larger samples. But then there is always a question of, uh, well, business necessity um, and, uh, you know, comparison of accuracy of, of your um, experiments on the sample and, you know, the costs, um, for, for those experiments. So um, you, you might not want to you know, have huge samples uh, because it might take a long time, for example, to collect all the data. So that's sort of the balance you need to keep in between the size of the sample and um, the accuracy of the actual results. But the point I'm trying to make here is that since um, you get variability and variance in uh, sample, um, the the results that you get within the sample, these are not precise, right? Um, so for example, if you have some mean values um, that we calculate for a sample, um, the only thing we can say is that if we take some other sample, well, the mean value that we get in another sample 
will lie uh, within some confidence interval within some region uh, from uh, sort of the, the mean value that you have in one sample and the actual mean value in the population. And so we're always talking about the distributions, right? Um, this distribution comes from the simple fact that there is this variability um, that occurs naturally due to uh, the finite size um, of the sample. So um, let's say we try to do, um, you know, we want to do a B test. And uh, so we have a control group, sort of the group um, that, uh, for example, uses the web page as is. And then we have our test or variation group, um, something where you're testing, you know, something new. Now, in fact, in real life, um, you know, the, the company can run hundreds, thousands of tests at the same time in parallel, but now we're going to just talk about, you know, A and B. So, and the test runs, uh, you know, a certain time, and let's say we have, you know, we, we, we do measure, we can measure either, to, for example, conversion rate, how it changes, and the claim is that the conversion rate of B should be um, larger, or uh, we, for example, measure, say, you know, the revenue obtained, um, daily revenue that we obtained uh, from, from these changes. And here is, I think, the, the sort of the key uh, um, to understanding um, this, this whole story about uh, testing. Um, as I said, um, let's say we have two, uh, you know, two, two um, approaches, right? Um, there is sort of, for example, A and, and, and B. And we do measure um, the values. Um, and here is mean um, in conversion, say, for example, uh, for the variant B. And uh, um, here is the value, right? Here is the value for their um, original setup. Notice that if we just calculate change in conversion rate, right? Here conversion rate is two, here is 175. So the change in conversion rate is um, large, right? It's 14%, right? It's average conversion rate that we, um, the change that we observe um, in this measurement. So it's sort of, it's, it's uplift. Um, and that seems uh, to tell us that like, look, this change um, within the group B is, is, is pretty large. But now, can we trust it? Can we actually, um, by just looking at, at, at just at this number, at this delta, um, can we say that um, B is definitely uh, a better um, option, right? A better setup. And unfortunately, in this particular example, we cannot. Um, and the reason is that, um, as, as, as we have discussed, um, you know, we, we look at the mean value, but the mean value doesn't tell you the entire story. It's a distribution of possible values that um, the, this setting can have. And this is a pretty wide distribution that we're seeing here. Now, um, here is a distribution from um, the setup A. And you notice that there are parts where, uh, for example, uh, the, the distribution overlap and overlap um, significantly. Um, and, and there are parts where, um, you know, the performance of the B is, is worse than A, for example, right? Um, so that actually, from a statistical point of view, tells us that we cannot uh, confidently claim that you know B is really improvement over A. So how do we? How can we actually verify um, and, and make sure that um, the the new setup is better, right? The variant is better um, than um, their null, so-called null hypothesis. Well, it's really um, boils down to looking and comparing the tails of the distribution. For example. If you look um, on, on the left side of this uh, slide, here is again uh, 
control set, or it's called variation A and variation B distribution, and there is a quite significant overlap, but it can be uh, computed, and the way we compute those numbers, um, you will learn about it on the seminar today. Um, but there is, by looking at these numbers, there is a 90% chance that variation B has a higher conversion rate. And um, in, in this case, we can confidently say if we set up confidence level um, the way it's usually down to 95%, um, we, can, um, we can confidently say that um, the variation B is better. Um, it's the same number of participants, but fewer the conversions were different. Now, if, for example, um, the difference in number of conversions is small, um, then you realize that, uh, you know, that, that the overlap is really too big. And so you cannot, and again, you can numerically calculate this, um, um, that there is only 75, 74% chance that this has a high conversion rate in this picture. Um, it's interesting also to look what we see on the right-hand side, where um, it's a distribution of deltas. Um, and you realize that, yeah, it's, it's almost getting close to be symmetric, which means, um, you know, in, in it, it is very possible that, um, you know, the, the second, um, the, 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 the B um, version will perform worse, you know, looking at the red area, um, that the B version will perform worse than, than the A version. And so we cannot confidently say um, in this case um, that uh, the improvement is 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 worth it, but you know if we look um, at this picture, um, it's very clear that um, improvement is significant. So, bottom line, um, whenever we look at the results, of statistical uh, the results of A/B testing, um, we of course look at the delta or effect, sort of the, the amount of change, but we also need to look at the distribution and overlap in the distribution. And um, based on that overlap, we can. Um, we can calculate and decide um, if um, the metric is, uh, um, you know, if, if the metric is valid. Now, uh, on the seminar, you actually got to calculate uh, p-values and, and confidence intervals um, that um, provide these numbers to you. Okay. So going back to uh, design of the experiments, um, you know, again, uh, quite often you don't just do A-B testing, you do this A, B, C, D, et cetera. So many, many uh, tests that run in parallel. And only one of them um, is, you know, optimal. Only one improvement, for example, um, gives you um, a significant improvement. And so, in some sense, what you do is you take all of your, say, visitors, viewers, um, and you send them through sort of different um, tests, right, to different approaches. And for some of those approaches, for example, conversion rates are much higher than for others. So during this test, you pretty much um, sort of wasting good opportunity to sell people uh, more items or to get high conversion um, for those that, for those of yours that are being in the cohort um, that's being tested on their inferior um, version, right? And, and so you can think about this as sort of a, the regret period because, and especially if, you know, it's, it's a long, um, test time, um, there'll be a lot of use, well, not wasted, but um, use not optimally, right? And so again, the idea initially that the sort of exploration phase when you run all those A, B, C, D tests, then you select the optimal way of, of uh, sort of the best conversion, for example, the best design of the web page or the best pricing or the best uh, whatever, and then you start exploiting it, right? You start making money out of it. And, and so um, the obvious idea is, well, can we be more efficient here um, and not wasting all this time, especially if we 
uh, quickly realized that some um, of the methods, some of the uh, you know, A, B, C, D approaches are inferior to others. And um, that um, can be um, formulated mathematically to this problem of um, it's called multi multi armed bandits or dynamically adjusting adjusted allocation, because what we want to do is we want to um, literally reduce the amount of time or reduce um, the amount of of customer views that going into um, the petition to the option into um, the one that is inferior. Um, so multi-armed bandits, it's actually, uh, it's sort of, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a name for this thought experiment, um, hypothetical experiment, when, um, you know, a person in the casino um, has two options. One option is, uh, you know, to select the, the, the machine um, uh, to play, slot machine to play, um, and, and then just sort of play with it. Um, but then, um, depending on sort of the result, he can stay in the machine or try another machine. And, and you know, for those who've been to casinos, you know, there are some people who, who strongly kind of um, go and select, the, try to, to select the right machine. And then if there's a winning strike, um, just stay with that machine, for example. So, and then the question is, okay, what's your optimal strategy, right? How long, to, how, how often do you need to switch machines and how long do you stay at the machine, um, you know, to eventually um, gain the most. And, um, you know, it, but in this case, I mean, the, the, the notion of course that, that, you know, the machine is, the, the, the winning window um, in the machine, in the slot machine is, of course, you know, it's a random process. And so with, with all those random processes, you're trying to um, come up with an optimal strategy. Um, well, in fact, this is why they also use in reinforcement learning um, as, as sort of a, a strategic approach. So what are you trying to do? We're trying to, instead of just having this long explore phase and then um, exploit, and so having this pretty large you know, regret territory when um, we're, we're just sort of wasting, wasting time on the options that are not um, optimal, that are inferior, well, try to adjust and literally move uh, and shrink um, those um, tests, those, those um, cohorts that are inferior where you can get enough statistical evidence that, for example, a conversion rate is with particular design is smaller than with others. Well, redistribute um, customers and send less customers to um, that option. Um, now, the, the question here is, of course, how to do this, you know, optimalists such that eventually you kind of, you do all the exploration, you have, you do all your tests, but at the same time, um, you know, you, 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 you use your traffic um, as, as maximum as possible. And so th there are two algorithms, uh, quite straightforward algorithm that allows you to do it. One is called the epsilon greedy algorithm. And the idea is the following, you select some, chance and probability to explore um, and uh, sort of one minus this probability will be your exploitation. And so what you do is, um, you know, on, on the starting point, you either select a user for, for a test run or uh, send it to the best um, option and send it to the best option um, in this case, it's um, exploitation, right? And exploration is, um, you know, trying at, at various options. Um, the, other, um, the other approach will be through what's so-called uh, Thompson sampling. Um, the idea is that for, again, for each and every, uh, um, for each uh, approach, for each, um, a, B, or C cohort, um, you have 
some distribution of um, you know expected rewards. Um, and again, the thing is, you know, here we, when we do the testing, well, it's it's usually live systems, so you know, customers do converge, customers do make purchase. Um, you know, we are making money, and so depending on um, on on the cohort um, and on the design, you, for example, have a distribution of the revenues, and 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 they're different, right? As as we previously saw, and so the idea of Thompson sampling is that. Um, on every every time um, we sample uh, from this all the distributions, but you know looking at the expected rewards um, from the distributions and choose the one <clears throat> choose the distribution that gives us the largest sample, and then uh, we send uh, sort of the next customer to that uh, cohort. So it's really dynamically reallocating resources. And eventually, of course, it's very clear that in this approach, eventually all the customers will go to the winning um, strategy, for example, in terms of to the distribution, um, it, it, will be, it will keep shifting um, to the right, like here the distribution of type A. So, um, and, and here's an example of uh, how, you know, traffic dynamically um, it being redistributed um, based either on this, you know, a greedy strategy, uh, absolute greedy strategy, a Thompson sampling, they're, they're, they're quite similar. Um, but the point is that we're very, very quickly sending more, though, though we're starting with pretty much similar traffic being sent to um, all arms, right? And, and, and the sort of control version. Um, Control is, you know, that's a test, right? Um, to where we strongly uh, send all the traffic into dominating um, into the, this arm one um, and less to the one that is inferior. And by doing so, we're not sort of wasting resources um, on testing itself. And so, uh, today, when we design those um, experiments, um, you know, we either go for this very pure A-B testing um, where, um, you know, you have, say, variations A and B, and you take all your population and send it and, and, and keep it uh, stable through all the time of testing. But this is, again, this, in this approach, we are sort of wasting resources because most of the testing is done live. And so every sort of test customer still converges and not converges, brings revenue, not bringing revenue. And so the idea of multi-arm bandits or dynamic um, design of experiments is that um, as time goes by, um, we gradually increase the volume of customers that go through the preferred um, variation. Um, and 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 decrease those that go through the uh, the one that, that that gives us less, for example, revenue. Okay, so this was a very short lecture on on experiments, but I thought it's it's important for you to learn about this simply because um, whatever model uh, you create using machine learning approach, um, there is always some model that existed previously plus. Um, uh, the question would be, okay, if your model deteriorates with time or it's improved with time. And so there is always a need to compare um, and have uh, some uh, statistically sound um, results saying, yes, um, the model performs better um, than before or worse than before, or for example, performance is deteriorating with time and it's time to um, update the model. So this is kind of very, very practical uh, topic. Now, if you're interested uh, how to, you know, how to do the A-B testing and go in depth, um, here is a book by Ron Harvey uh, on how to do this, strongly recommend it. With this, um, the lecture is over and more details on, on A-B testing will be given um, at the seminar. Thank you.